Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Piece of Shit Integra! Woo! <laughs> so, um, I started working on this thing already, and I've got about a couple hours worth already worth of wiring into it, and we're still wiring. Um, we're trying to figure out this engine harness before we move on. Um, I got everything plugged into the harness that I knew where it went. Uh, the map sensor, TPS, and uh, intake air temp I had to wire. Um, I redid this with a new plug because the plug was all fucked up. And I uh, had to ex you know, run the wiring there. And um, now we are doing figuring out well, what all these open wires are. So, so far we've got injector one and four labeled. So we got, this is the power or the ground or whatever for injector one. And then this is number four so far. And now we're gonna find out where two and three are. And then I'm assuming the rest of them are just gonna be the other side of the injector, which doesn't matter which where they go. Uh, this random wire right here, I'm still unsure of. This ring terminal down here, I'm still unsure of. So we're just gonna have to go along and trace every single one of these wires back and see exactly where they go. Uh, we also got some bare green and yellow wires down here that we don't know where they go. So pretty much what we're doing is we got a multimeter on the inside of the car here. And uh, I give one end of the wire to Christian and then I take a wire and I'm pinning the ECU plugs. So like this is connector A right here, the biggest plug of the ECU plugs here. This is the biggest one and this is connector A. So when you're looking at it this way, the top right is injector one, top bottom is injector four, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So there's diagrams online for this stuff if you guys wanna go look it up, it's really not too difficult. Um, but we're pretty much just literally tracing wires on a diagram to see exactly where each wire is going to on the harness to verify it. And uh, yeah, so this will be a lot of fun. I got the seat in. Oh yeah, we got a seat in this thing. Look at this. Woo! It's almost as bad as the Mustang. So this seat uh, only has two bolt holes. The front two spots are completely rotted out. Um, so I don't know what he's gonna do about that situation there. Um, there's like, yeah, there's just rotted out. But maybe you could run a big old bolt and a nut or something, but we'll fuck with that later. But uh, yeah, seat's in, match is pretty nice. <laughs> so yeah, we're just gonna continue tracing some damn wires here and we'll pick back up when we know more about this harness. <clears throat> okay guys, so I figured I'd give you an update on this uh, rat nest. Um, we got everything wired up, the injectors and all that, and I wired them all. And turns out that the injectors don't have any power going to them. Um, one side of the injectors has power and then they ground to the ECU. I verified the ground wiring, but now I'm verifying the injectors. They don't have any power, so the car doesn't start. Um, and funny enough, I went in the car and there's like a live 12 volt wire right here. This one's alive. It's got 12 volts when the key's on and it's just stripped sitting there. And I was just checking some wiring over and I had the ECU sitting like this, something like this. And I had my ground probe over here in the door. I don't know if you guys can see, it's kind of dark over here, but I had my ground probe right there. And that was set there and that's all I did. And it started. So there's gotta be a loose wire somewhere or something to the injectors. So I'm gonna see if it starts now. Now that I moved the ECU back. Things a fucking rat's nest, guys. Um, normally, I don't even deal with cars like this, so I just send it on its way. I'd be like, dude, sorry, not sorry. 
Um, just because I didn't really build this car, guys. I literally, like, this was just a shell that was brought to me, and he said, hey, put a motor in it. And here I am putting a motor in it, and I don't know. I, I fucking piece of shit. Um, all right, well, it's got a check engine light now, so we'll see why the engine light's on quick. And uh, I'll pick back up in a little bit when I know more. But like I said, it would not run when the ECU was like flat on the ground and then I turned it like this. That's the only thing I did, guys. I moved the ECU like this and then I just said, what the hell, I don't even know where to go at this point. And I went and turned the key and just cranked it again for the hell of it and it fired right up. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm gonna see why the engine light's on quick. See if that'll tell me anything. If that doesn't tell me anything, um, I was thinking about running maybe just like a 12 volt wire off of the fuse box or something to the one side of the injectors so the injectors will get power because initially we were cranking and cranking and cranking and cranking and it wouldn't start so we sprayed brake cleaner in the throttle body to see if it would pop and it did so we kind of narrowed it down to hey that it's got spark and whatnot but it doesn't have an injector so and anyway, it's got fuel pressure I threw a Walboro 255 in the tank too because it didn't even have a fuel pump in it when he brought it to me so Anyways, it's got fuel pressure, it's holding steady, but uh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know where the fuck this is going. I don't know where this video is going, but I'm gonna try to figure out this wiring a little bit more. I'm not really gonna film any of it because this is just, it's just gonna be annoying. But uh, anyways, I'll pick back up in a little bit. Hello, hello, hello. All right guys, so we got the car running finally. Um, I've literally spent all day dicking with the wiring on this thing. And then to turn out that it was more wiring problems to begin with, not just the harness. Um, the ECU pins on the ECU side were totally like squished and pushed out. So on the pins, sometimes on those ECU connectors, they, the pins will actually move around a little bit and get pushed back or pushed forward or just crunched down or something. And I ended up having to pretty much take the pins out, reshape them with a piece of pliers and a pick and I shoved them back in and now everything's making connection and I start the car and it has no codes. So that is good to go. Everything there seems good. Now we are just draining the oil out of the thing. We took the exhaust manifold off and shit. We got the radiator hoses on. Um, now we're going to be um, working on the turbo manifold here. Uh, this turbo manifold had a 38 millimeter wastegate and um, this guy got a V-band one instead of a two bolt. So I had to cut that off and re-weld this. So I'm gonna have to re-weld this onto here and uh, do some of that. So yeah, hopefully I'll get this done and then we can bolt the turbo onto the manifold and move on from there. Michael just got the oil filter off. Rip. Yep. This thing on. <laughs> well, what the touch of camera? No, I just look at it real weird. Is this thing? I think is this on? Oh, oh, hey, how you doing? All right, so I haven't filmed pretty much anything today or last night at all, but uh, I did do a lot of stuff on the car. As you can see, it's almost completed. Uh, we got the turbo manifold on and everything. What did we do last night? Live stream. Oh yeah, we live streamed for a long time. What else did we do to the car, though? I threw the axles in last night. Did you figure out all the wiring yesterday? Oh, yeah. We fixed, we fixed a bunch of wiring stuff. That's where I left off. That's where I left off. I'm on a fucking trip. <laughs> um, so the car had a bunch of ECU pins that were, like, bent and pushed in. So I had to de-pin the computer, like, where the computer plugs in. Those pins that go into that harness there, I had to move them around and jiggle them a little bit. So they connected better because the car would like throw a couple codes and then the injector wouldn't fire, the injectors wouldn't fire, etc. But uh, I did get pretty much everything else tidied up on the car. We got the oil lines ran, the sandwich plate on the back of the block is on, the intercooler is mounted. We just mounted it right to this crash bar here, ran the piping all the way over and up. This uh, Skunk 2 intake manifold though has like a 45 degree um, throttle body on it so I had to kind of ghetto rig a coupler here but uh, it seems like it's okay hopefully it'll hold up for a little while this is really the only option I had at the time because um, this is the parts I've been given to use 
So I'm just making what we got work here uh, for this guy to help him out. Uh, we filled the thing up with coolant here. We made a dump tube for the wastegate here. Uh, look at them pretty TIG welds. Damn, you should call me Boosted Boys. Yeah, I should try the stick welder out. You guys should let me know if you want me to try that thing out. It's a big old stick welder. But anyways, we got the wastegate on. I got a downpipe made for it too. Um, super nice TIG welds there too. Uh, the uh, downpipe on the eBay shit, when you buy like an eBay downpipe, they never fucking fit. You gotta like cut the flange off, reposition them where you want it, and then run it down. I got the, uh, what, do we, what else do we do here? We got the uh, oil return into the pan. I uh, just tapped it and threaded it to pipe thread, like I do on a lot of these. Uh, I got the downpipe here, running under the car. Looks pretty snazzy. Uh, yeah! Look at that Skunk 2 Alpha Radiator. <sighs> God damn it. Cool it down! <sighs> But anyways, I watched uh, Boosted Boys' video last night. If you guys haven't checked it out, you guys should go check it out. Uh, they were having some issues putting my fuel injectors in. Oh, they were yours? I thought they were some guys. Oh, yeah, some guy sent them fuel injectors, not some me. Some guy. Yeah, some guy sent them fuel injectors. But uh, anyways, they tried to fit the injector, and they said that it was too loose on the bottom O-ring. So, like, this is just a fuel rail I have laying here. Um, the bottom O-ring... This little guy right here, they said that they fit really loose and that they didn't think they were going to want to use them. So I messaged uh, Jeremy and I just said, hey man, uh, those injectors do fit a little bit loose into the bottom O-ring. You just got to crunch the fuel rail down and then it seats at the body of the injector. It doesn't seat at like the normal spot uh, where it does on like a factory injector. And uh, he messaged me back and he said, hey, we'll, we'll try them. Anyways, now we're going to hook up the rest of the exhaust onto the car because this guy wants to run a full exhaust. And uh, we'll kind of maybe show you some of that and show you how to run a full exhaust on a turboed Integra. Uh, maybe. We'll see. But anyways, we'll get this thing going. We'll pick back up. So we uh, got a lot of more stuff done on the car. I don't know where the fuck I left off again, but uh, the front bumper's on, uh, the intercooler and piping's all on. Uh, I think I already said all this. Radiator fan. Oh yeah, we put a radiator fan on it because it did not have one, and we just uh, wired it into the factory uh, plug-in for the fan. I usually run them that way because then you can just set up on the ECU whatever temperature you want the fan to come on at. Uh, that seems to work really good for me at least and uh, yeah so I ended up starting the car and noticed that it was really lean because this tune is actually set up for pump gas and this car had a full tank of E85 in it so we had to add some fuel into the tune I added like 35 percent and it's still lean so it's probably gonna need another 10 or 15 percent into the tune-up and then um, oh I also got the gauges wired I didn't show you all that, but I put a lot of the interior back together on this thing, the door panel over there, the uh, back seat's in. Yeah, the back seat's in. No, it did not have the back seat installed, so we did that. Um, yeah, this car's got a nice steering wheel, too. It's got an NRG with a quick release and shit, something I'd never buy, but it's uh, it looks pretty nice. <laughs> uh, I got the wideband installed, and all the gauges are wired here. I got the water temp gauge. Uh, this is like an aftermarket, I don't even know, like a uh, auto meter or something. Uh, the water temp gauge. And they have it wired like into the stock uh, location. So 
the gauge on the cluster doesn't work, but the gauge on the auto meter does, which actually works out pretty good because I'd rather trust a gauge that has a, a reading on it to tell you exactly what the temperature is versus cold or hot. Uh, it's kind of a better indicator that way, but pretty much you just use the factory sensor on the head here. It's like a single port um, on the cylinder head, and we just used a butt connector to go onto it, and it worked out pretty good because on this engine harness, this whole fucking wiring mess here, there was no sensor to come up to it for the factory cluster uh, gauge. But whatever, we got that wired up. Uh, the motor's not leaking nothing yet, and it seems good. What do you think, Christian? This car going to be gone and we're going to be happy that it's gone? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we got a lot of it sorted out. Uh, it was a wiring mess, obviously, but got a lot of it dialed in. So far, the only thing I got to do now is get a battery box for it because we're going to put a battery box in the trunk and actually mount the battery in the battery box because right now it's literally just sitting back there, and I guess that's how the guy had it before him. But I'm going to put a battery box in it for him so it's a little bit safer. And uh, I got to get some vacuum line for the blow off valve and the wastegate, and then spark plugs, and we can tune it. But I'm going to do all that stuff tomorrow. Uh, we'll probably, I'll probably film a little bit more tomorrow, hopefully. I know I didn't really film a whole lot of fucking jack shit today, and I apologize, but uh, I figured, you know, some video is better than no video. Yeah. At least that's what Christian tells me. He said, I'd rather have something than nothing, but. Uh, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and the headaches that we're going through with this thing. But uh, we did get her dialed in. It seems like it's running pretty good. We haven't hit any big bumps in the road yet, so we'll see if the wiring is good there when we hit some bumps in the road. I just have a feeling that... Some literal bumps. Yeah, we're going to hit some bumps in the road, hopefully. Um, but, yeah. Anyways, smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you guys are new, and uh, we will see you maybe tomorrow. Yeah, probably tomorrow I'll, I'll make a video tune in this thing or something. And uh, you guys can look forward to that. And uh, we will see you later. <laughs>